Hey, Candy with Blessed Life. Um, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and click notifications if you want to hear more from us. Anyways, today I'm going to talk about something that is actually worldwide. It's called A Day Without Cars. Uh, I never experienced it in the U.S., although supposedly it's been happening since the year 2000. None of the cities that I ever <laughs> um, lived in, I guess, really cared. Um, but now it, in Colombia, the people are like really hopping on it. Starting in 2000, the mayor of Bogota started it because he was a bike person and he liked it. And this is the thing. It's not realistic and it's not, um, I feel like it's pl politicians blaming people for their inability and inadequacies in solving the traffic problems in the world. And there are 101 other solutions that these politicians need to be applying, but don't. Um, and in Colombia in particular, it's a huge problem because, for example, there's so much corruption. There are so many roads in Colombia that have been paid for like 10 times. And the companies that they pay them, they pay them the money, and then they just don't build the roads. And they're the buddies and friends of the politicians that paid them in the first place, and they never get prosecuted. They never go to prison for it. And so it keeps going on and on and on and on. Um, and so that's one of the things that if these politicians, particularly in Colombia, and that's where I'm going to address this issue, um, are concerned about uh the the traffic in the pro traffic problems in their cities stop letting your greedy and corrupt friends get contracts to build roads and let them get away without building those roads put them in prison then they'll stop doing it and the next time you pay somebody to build a road they'll build a road or find the good honest people that build roads and give the contracts to them hey it's that simple Bogota, Cali, Popayan. <laughs> um, in that area, the area of Calca where we first lived had a huge problem with that. They had there were many many roads that that were literally on the books be, having been built like two three times four times five times. There's a a little city called Usenda, and it's supposed to, the road was supposed to have been built and it was never built and it's just this rocky horrible road to go up and down in a car. The best way to get to you send it is by horse. <laughs> and you can't even take a bike. Um, the second thing is, yeah, it is more healthy for people to, you know, take bikes and walk and stuff. And if you have jobs where you only have to walk 15, 20 minutes to your job, that's great. Or if you can bike there in 15, 20 minutes, then that's making your day better and good. Go for it. Except when it rains. And it rains a lot in Columbia because guess what? We're in a tropical climate. Um... And so, you know, you really do have, people do need cars today, especially, for example, my maid that comes to my house. Now, she is the exception. She lives very, very far away because she lives way up in the mountains on the other side of Cali. I live in the south of Cali. She's, you have to go all the way to the north of Cali and then way up a mountain and on the other side of the mountain to get to her house. And she still comes because we pay her a little more, <laughs> and um, she's worth it, and uh, she likes working for us, so she still comes. And her daughters actually even come, um, try to, to work here, but for another family, but it didn't end up working out. They weren't as wonderful as we were. But anyways, so for people like that, and there are a lot of people that commute long distances, and for them, it's not realistic to take a bus Especially, you work hard, you say, you, you suffer with jobs where you have to work from 6 o'clock in the morning to 7, 8, 9 o'clock at night, and you suffer with that job so you can get ahead and you get your car, and then somebody says, whoops, you can't drive it. Now, to this year, day without a car is on a Saturday, but usually, it, it's for some reason, it's always December, I mean, September 22nd, so it can be on a weekday. 
And the first one I ever experienced, let's go all the way back. The first one I ever experienced was in Popayan. And it started at um, 7 in the morning, which was reasonable because that meant that people could get their kids dropped off to school and get home. And then it started. Or they could, and, but a lot of people did. They rode their bike. If they lived close to the school that I was teaching at, they actually rode their bikes into school. But I wasn't going to ride a bike from where I lived to the school. And let's, let's be honest about bikes. The seats are extremely uncomfortable. Why can't somebody make a bike seat that doesn't hurt your butt? Okay, and feel like it's giving you the biggest wedgie and wants to just rip you and tear you um, in two from your butt up. Okay, if somebody would invent bike seats that were comfortable, I'm sure a lot more people would ride bikes. But bike seats for, um, you know, and the people that do it as athletes, you know, if they want to do that to their bodies and suffer that pain, you know, and they think it's worth it, and I guess some people like it, maybe, you know, maybe they're masochist. I don't know. But bike seats are not comfortable. So first off, if your solution is people need to ride bikes, then invent a freaking bike seat that's comfortable. Second, invent a bike that has some kind of covering so that when it rains and it's miserable and wet out, you don't have to be riding in that. Okay? So cover the streets then, you know, or something. Um, but the first time that we had it, I did think that there were some positive things about it because you, you, you could um, get to work by 7. And then it ended at like 3 or 4 o'clock. So it wasn't such a drastic time range in there and um you know and, and it was a good thing people got out and rode bikes with their kids or a lot of people took taxis because taxis are still allowed to drive thank god because that would put a lot of people out of work and um then of course the buses ran and some other people chose to take the buses but the buses here in Colombia are mostly diesel and um spit out they don't have the same laws in Colombia that they do, say, in the U.S. So if you're out in any city in Colombia and you're walking a long time and you're walking by where cars are driving by, you are going to be like, Ugh, after a certain amount of time. Um, the pollution is bad. But that, there's an easy solution for that. Make stricter emission laws. Okay, yeah, that's going to, well, they say it's going to raise the cost of cars, but if you actually take the cost of a car in the U.S., and not even an American car, let's take a Japanese car, like say, say a Toyota, and say a Toyota that sells for $40,000 in, in the U.S., here it would be approximately, it wouldn't even, it should be $120 million, but it isn't even $120 million. Well, you can say that's because of the lower emissions. But, I mean, it actually, there's real, I mean, it's really close. So, I really don't think that raising the emissions, and actually, if everywhere in the world raise the emissions, then the car companies are going to have to do the same thing in cars everywhere. Every car is going to have to have the same kind of emissions quality as in the U.S., so the whole world is going to be better off. Um, and uh, the fuels are going to have to be improved. You know, diesel fuel is horrible. Um, and you, you know, there's only so much people are going to pay for a car no matter what. So, yeah, maybe they'll make a little bit less profit. Maybe the CEOs will, <laughs> you know, have to either figure out how to make that car a little bit cheaper or they're going to have to um, turn around and, you know, maybe not make so much money because, but that's the cost of doing business. And then because they're doing that, maybe we can give them some good tax breaks to help them out, like especially this first couple of years. But whatever it is, um, you know, it really doesn't, for example, I did my research and I started looking in, in Bogota where all this started because of the mayor who was a bike, uh, um, um, person and liked riding on the bikes he thought oh you know and no it didn't lower the emissions because there were more taxis on the road and more buses on the road and 
and especially with the buses, they're the ones that put out the worst kind of um, emissions. And I'm going to tell you, I was in Bogota six years ago, and we had to ride the Transmillennial because we didn't have the money to take taxis everywhere. Also, taxis in Bogota can be very dangerous. Um, there's a lot of problems and reports about people taking taxis and then, like, especially if you just, like, you see the people in New York, you hail the taxi and get in. If you don't get a taxi where you've called a legitimate good taxi company and they give you a, a password to get in and everything, um, there have been a lot of people that have just gotten a taxi off the street and they disappear. So um, taxis aren't safe. So then, oh, I'll have to take a bus. Buses, six years ago, and I sincerely doubt that they put the thousands more buses that they would actually have to have to keep this. The buses were horrific in um, Bogota. The Transmillennial, the, they, they, they call it the Mio here. It's the same system. It's the same kind of system that's run. But here in um, Cali, it's not quite as bad. But in Bogota, it was absolutely horrible. It was bone crushing, standing up in buses. Everybody's pressed up against you, gives pickpockets, um, any freebies. Um, one time I got on the bus and the doors closed behind and my husband and his brother, and I didn't even speak any Spanish. Um, he, the doors closed and um, I was trapped and they were on the the, you know, just looking at me, and luckily I was right at the door because the door closed right behind me, and the bus driver was right like in front of that door, and I just started banging on that door like a crazy person screaming, and he opened the door and let me out, and um, and then we decided if that ever happened again, what we would do, but it was a terrifying experience at the time. And but when you got on those buses, it was a horrible, horrible, horrible experience. Um, I, I, I've never ever been in that experience. I've never been to New York, never been on the subway. So, but I, I think it is really, really bad. I think that you would probably have to compare it to perhaps some of the um, bus systems in Asia where you see the people so cramped. Now, in Cali, where I live right now, it's not that bad. But it is bad. And I can tell you, standing on a bus, having to stand on buses for 40, 50, 60 minutes is not, you know, comfortable. Even if you're not um, crushed up against people. And it can't be good for your knees and your shoulders and everything else because you're, I mean, the way the buses drive and they drive so fast and you're holding on to things. It's, it's just not a good system. So, um, that's another thing. Now, in the country of Colombia, they had a lot of guys that used to have horses and carts. And you would still see them. And I always thought it was cool. Every once in a blue moon, you'll still see one. But they're kind of pretty much outlawed in the city. So, that was a way to prevent pollution. But they got rid of it. And what did their solution was they gave those guys these little kind of like moped motorcycle um, trucky kind of things that it's kind of like a motorcycle in the front and a truck in the back. And um, because they were guys that would pick up and deliver furniture and pick up trash and do different things. They got rid of those guys. So they were saying, so, you know, it's, it's hypocritical. Another thing is, um, it's, for example, I had um, a surgery four months ago, and I've had some problems with my, um, uh, what's it called, the where he cut me. I had a problem with that ceiling in this one little part, and so, and it was like keloiding, I guess you would call it, and so he had to cut again, just last week he had to cut again, and he had to um, sew me back up. Now, I was supposed to get my stitches out on Saturday, but I can't get my stitches out on Saturday. Why? Because I'm not in the shape um, with stitches still in and just being cut to ride on a bicycle. Plus, the seats aren't comfortable. And um, 
it just it wouldn't be comfortable. Plus, going to the doctors is a really long way away. I'm not going to ride on a bus because I would still have to walk a long way. Um, and I don't mind walking. I mean, we walk all the way to our mall and back for exercise. So that's not the problem. But to get from where the bus would drop you off to where it is. And then a taxi would be really expensive. So, I mean, and that would be our all, only alternative. So my husband's calling and hopefully we can go today to the doctor's. This is Friday and he can take out the stitches on Friday and we don't have to worry about this stupid day without cars. Another thing is it's so hypocritical because like I said, these politicians are not doing anything to solve the traffic problems. They're not doing anything to solve the pollution problems. And in particular in the in Cali where I live, the mayor cannot say that he is an ecological person, that he cares about the ecology of Cali because we live in the south, which is the greenest part of um, the city. And we live in an area called Ponce, which used to be all old farms, and then it became, you know, smaller little um, but yards, but still fairly big yards and houses. And then in, in recent years, it's been what they call condominiums, which are gated housing communities. And some apartments. But they used to have a law, if you build apartments or if you build a gated um, housing community, um, the apartments could only be as high as six floors and you had to, for every apartment, you had to have X square meters of green. So around every apartment area used to be like a public green area and it always depended on how many apartments were inside the apartment community. <clears throat> And so you still had all these trees, you still have, there's a, what's called the Ponce River because of all the farms, they took and made all these inlets and these little, you know, um, river, riverlets or whatever you would call it. And so all over Ponce is the Ponce River. And I mean, it's just basically a little stream, but it kept all the farms going. And then as the houses came in, they maintained those. And there are laws to me. There were laws to maintain the Ponce River and not interfere with all the inlets going everywhere that they were going. And so it kept it keeps this, this area fresh, clean. We can deal with the pollution from the cars because the trees are constantly cleaning out our air. And, I mean, you can tell the difference. When you come to our apartment versus, for example, where my mother and father-in-law live in the north, it's day and night. So... The mayor of Cali, who cares so much about um, the air quality, um, he, and I'm sure he got big payoffs from these um, companies that build apartments and, and, and do this kind of thing, he changed the laws. Now they can have up to 18-story apartments, and they don't have to have any green area, and so for example, you now have these morons and they're building apartment complexes in an area where like you had one house, one house, one family living. And now like there's one that it's going to be 90 some apartments. No, it's going to be 40 some apartments, 90 some cars. Or is it going to be 90 some apartments? I can't remember. But it's going to be a ridiculous amount of apartments and people in the same area that it used to be one family. And you see them going up and the problem with um, the height of the buildings it also is it cuts the wind because everywhere Colombia is a mountainous country and and the mountains just blow these beautiful delicious breezes to cool off it gets hot 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 but then all of a sudden these breezes just come through and just refresh you and it's beautiful and wonderful but those are all going to be dead if um, you have 18-story buildings cutting off the breezes. And what I even said to this one apartment complex, this is ridiculous. What, you know, what your, your ad says live the green, but you're, there's no green. And she's like, oh, no, it's going to be like, it's going to be like in the West. Well, in the West is another area that they allowed them to over um, build and build really tall buildings and make it, you know, city. And it used to be beautiful 
the Cali River used to run through it. Um, still runs through it, but it's like a trickle now because they've ruined the ecology of the area. And so, you know, this is this is the mayor. He's, oh, we're going to have a day without cars. Ooh. And see, it doesn't hurt. You know, and who does this really hurt? It's not going to hurt rich people because they're going to get in taxis if they really have to go somewhere. It's not going to hurt the poor people because most of the poor people, a lot of the poor people in Columbia, they work, but they work near their homes. They're not going to be traveling. The people who travel, travel, travel are the middle working class and the upper middle working class even, but it's the working, 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 working class people like the lady that cleans our house, her husband, he's a truck driver and he can't work on Saturday and he usually does because in Columbia, you usually have a six day work week. You don't have a five day work week like in the U.S. So these people now are out of jobs or they have to pay an outrageous amount of money to drive, ride in a taxi if they don't want to, or they have to be squished and, and they're going to have to get up twice as early. They're going to have to, and, and also, oh, they're going to have free bikes. But to bike to work, you're still going to have to get up super early. And how early are they going to have the bikes out for people to go and get them? Um, like I said, this year on Saturday, it's not going to be as drastic because it's on a Saturday. So there won't be quite as many people needing to work. But it's, it's just, it's not a good idea. A day without cars is not a good idea. And on top of everything else, I buy a car. I pay taxes. The taxes are supposed to go to take care of the roads. And I should have a right to use my car on the roads that my taxes are paying for. Period. And a sentence. On top of that, it's like an anti, you know, it's like a communist regime, you know. And in China where everybody used to ride in bikes, now they're buying cars. So China's going forward, and now the rest of the modern world wants to go backwards and go to bikes. And the thing is, for example, I read in this article about Bogota and this guy, he was, his job is to check the air. And so he was saying that he really didn't see much of a difference in the air, but he said, oh, but my commute was a lot shorter. Usually where it takes me 35, 40 minutes for my commute, it only took me 15 minutes. What was he in? He was in a government van. One guy in a big, gigantic van. If they're really that worried about air quality in Bogota, how come those guys that are doing the air quality things aren't riding around those little mini um, electric cars that we have right now? Why does he need a big, gigantic van? You know? That's what I mean. They... Oh, you know, it's, it's just so crazy. And anyways, that's my rant. I know I went all over the place, but um, I just had to get this out because my husband thinks I'm crazy. He thinks I should be positive about it because I can't change it. Well, yeah, I could. If I really knew how to speak Spanish better, I would start a protest in the day without cars. That's my idea. You guys have a blessed day. Have a good, good, good weekend. Um, see you soon.